It's right up my street, it's my boulevard, it's right up my straza, oh my god, it's garden right up there, oh, it's right up my podcast. Ooh. Welcome to Write Up My Podcast. My name's Gwen Watson. And I'm Kate White. And this is the podcast in which we talk to people about what's right up their boulevard that makes them feel good. This episode, we are exploring the world of earthing, or grounding as some people call it. And we talk to a very interesting man called Dr. Gaetan Chevalier. So he is the director of research at the Earthing Institute. He's based out in San Diego. Um, and he has a PhD in, oh my goodness, what's he have a PhD in? He has everything. <laughs> in everything. He's a nuclear physicist. He studied plasma physics and blah, blah, blah. He has a PhD in engineering mechanics. And he's a visiting scholar in the Department of Medicine at the University of San Diego. Um, so yeah, he's a very knowledgeable, very interesting man. So we're going to have, be having a really good chat with him later awesome but first we're just going to check in with each other to see how we're doing can i also acknowledge that there are a lot of listeners who love listening to me and kate whiffle waffle at the start of the podcast they're like oh it's like listening to two friends down the pub it's really nice <laughs> whereas other people are like can you just get to the point please yeah crack on <laughs> we don't need to hear about the minutiae of your lives thanks very much what is this episode about can you just get on with it please this is why i'm here i want to know how to feel good urgently um all right well for those people grab yourself a cup of tea pop back in a couple of minutes because first i want to know what have you been doing to make yourself feel good kate well after listening to the intro of last episode i sounded manic and as a result of that i've been trying to chill the hell out oh. <laughs> just slow it down a little bit I'm still in lockdown. We're still in lockdown in England. It's been all right, actually, because all of the, the the coffee shops and the takeaway places are all set up for it now. So actually, most of your kind of necessities you can still get really easily. Not being as big a life change as the first lockdown. Right, that's not. good. Well, yeah. particularly because I live in the city, so all these things are around you the whole time. So I probably noticed the lack of them more last time. But are you only allowed out once a day? Well, no, not really, because schools are still open. So you've got to go uh, and yeah, take kids to school. You've got to go and pick them up again you might also have to go and buy milk and bread and eggs and those sort of things so that once a day yeah. rule I mean god I might have totally got the wrong end of the stick of this <laughs> but I don't <laughs> it does not apply <laughs> My, Boris and me have got a personal um, <laughs> deal here that I just you know I could waltz about as much as I like I did a fun thing last night the Bristol Old Vic which is the theatre in Bristol city centre which is this amazing theatre did a virtual online murder mystery night, which was really fun. So you went into the Zoom page, all the actors were there, they performed all the different murder mystery things. You then got broken up into groups, which was quite weird because you were thrown into groups with strangers that you didn't know. Oh my God. I immediately got crippled by shyness and sat there in complete silence while everyone else chatted away like they've been friends forever. Who are these people <laughs> that are just so <laughs> confident that they'll go into a Zoom group and chat with strangers? You can't Anywho. even chat in a Zoom group anyway because it is crippling when suddenly there's eight people or 20 people and you've got to be the centre of attention. It's like that's exactly. not how conversations work. Exactly. Ultimately, it's the person with the loudest voice who just booms over everyone else. But yeah. anyway, it was fun and hats. I doff my cap at you, old Vic, Bristol Vic, for, you know, trying to keep these things going on. It's important. We value you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important to support the local venues because especially in the arts, people are really, really struggling. Oh, my God. Yeah. So well it's done, really tough. Kate. What about you, Gwen? What have you been doing? Well, I've been doing... Um, do you know, when I was talking about microdosing, that had quite the re reaction in the last episode as well. <laughs> but I've been going out... Um, picking mushrooms um, and yes I have continued with my experiments my dad in particular was interested to know more yeah, about I bet that. he was <laughs> doesn't matter how old you are you're still a naughty little girl in your yeah, dad's he eyes was like, oh yeah <laughs> um, I sometimes forget that um, my dad listens to this and, and yeah to people asking we are going to do that episode what it, what it's done is it's made me um, pay more attention to the ground around me as I go out walking and suddenly yeah. when you are looking for a particular mushroom you do notice all these other mushrooms and then I went out the other day and in the field there were all like these massive clumps of all these salmon coloured mushrooms I like and I was like these look amazing Beautiful. so um 
and that, I was like, these look good enough to eat. Do you and know what, which ones are edible? No, which are poisonous? I, but, no, and I would never trust my own my own judgment. I googled it; it looked like a safe one. I still do not ju- do not trust no. Google at all. No. Do not trust yourself. Get an expert. So I got a friend who is a forager, and he came round the very next morning at like eight thirty in the morning. We were out there in the rain, and he was like, "Yes, these are med- meadow wax caps. This is an amazing haul of them, um, an amazing <gasps> bevy of them." Yes, he's like, and so we picked loads of them and next thing I'm eating them for my breakfast and for Yummy. my dinner. Just to clarify, you're not making omelettes with magic mushrooms here. We're just talking about your bog standard delicious edible mushrooms, yes, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. So yes, my 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 um my search for hallucinogenics has led me down to foraging <laughs> and picking mushrooms that I can eat for my breakfast and lunch. Oh, and then so heaven. this afternoon I'm going foraging with another friend and we're going to look for chanterelles. The elusive chanterelle. Oh, they sound magical. I don't well they're mm. delicious. And um, yeah, but like I said, I would. N- I've heard plenty of stories of people killing themselves and their entire families yeah. by making soup with death caps. So I'm Blimey. not. Yeah, nothing's going in in my mouth unless a forager has approved it. My brain suddenly went to really dirty. I'm not even going to elaborate on what I was thinking about them. But yes. <laughs> yes. My dad's listening to this, Kate. <laughs> Sorry, Gwen's daddy. Approved mushrooms only. Thank you very yes. much. Ah, it's right up my podcast. This week's episode is grounding, also known as earthing, and this came about because, um, well, the one day I was chatting to Kate because I'd been stuck on my laptop all day, and I've I just needed to get outside, and I needed to be barefoot in my garden, even though it was wet and cold. I just wanted to be outside and barefoot and feeling the grass and the soil be- be- betwixt my toes and beneath my feet. And I was just like, I just needed to ground myself. And we were talking about this being a, a, a phrase that we use all the time, and it is something that we feel the need to do, and we do feel ungrounded, don't we? We want to go and just whoo, ground ourselves again. And then I remembered... Um, a friend of mine, a colleague at the station who's been sharing lots of Instagram posts of her being out and about barefoot and she's been talking about barefoot walking and earthing and I was like, huh, what is this earthing of which you speak? She sent through a couple of links to these movies that we watched and here we are. Yeah, and it's always been something that I've loved. I've always loved, particularly in the summer, offs, it's dry, but I've always loved taking my shoes and socks off and just being in the grass. It's always felt lovely. It's always felt great. And so when you brought the subject up, I was like, yes, maybe it's maybe there's more to it than just the physical sensation of the little grass on my little tootsies. Maybe yeah. there's more to it than that. So we both were really interested to find out more. And also, you you mentioned an interesting word, grounding. Obviously, that's what we're talking about. But you used it in the context of being grounded. So this is terminology that's used in so many different areas. It's interesting to know if it all comes back to the same root thing or if, you know, it's like psychologists use the word grounded to make you feel just more centred, bring you back into your own body as opposed rooted, to being yeah. being rooted in your body as opposed to being lost in your in your thoughts or in your headspace. Mm, um, mm. People into yoga use it to describe stances where you're firmly grounded in a stance with your feet, your hands, whatever body parts are connecting yeah. with the floor, providing that stable base. Um, and obviously we're going to talk about it in a more um, electrophysical sense of being grounded Yes, and what you're about to hear is me and Kate chatting to a nuclear physicist. <laughs> I think it would be safe to say that we're we're a little bit out of our depth, but hey, I did GCSE physics. I know my shit, all right? Me too. I was I actually felt like I was in GCSE physics. I was writing notes all the way through and just be like, what's he talking about now? Like really distant cogs in my brain were whirring back into action. I was like, oh, I remember electrons and ions. What? What did that do? But so obviously we're coming at it from an angle of um, wanting to feel good but also there are lots of claims that it has very vast physical benefits as well. Well before we dive into um, exploring the fascinating world of grounding I felt like I wanted to make a point because this is a really interesting topic and there's all sorts of research being done particularly by the Earthing Institute which Gaten is a director of They're, they're the leading voice when it comes to researching this subject they do make some very big and bold claims about the power 
of grounding. And I feel like I just want to clarify at the top here that we are not in the business of peddling miracle cures, are we? We're just... No. From a journalistic perspective and an interested perspective, we're exploring these topics. We're going to give you loads of places where you can go on and continue um, reading about it and researching it if you're interested to find out more. So we're just going in and exploring with an open mind and we invite you to do the same. So we started our chat with Gayton by asking, what is earthing? So earthing is apparently, that's what I learned, is an English term for grounding. So okay. Americans use grounding, mm. the English people use earthing, which means basically take an equipment and put it in contact with the, the earth, the planet earth. So that's the same thing we do. Um, what uh, was found is that being in actual physical bodily contact with the planet has health benefits. It's been known for centuries but forgotten in modern, modern, you know, society. Uh, so it's simply being in physical contact with the earth. Now, it's not always possible for us, like I'm talking to you right now, and I have my feet on a grounding mat. So you can use equipment that actually connects you to the earth. It's simply like an extension of being connected to the earth so like for example you plant a rod mm -hmm. in the earth and then you attach a wire to it and you connect this wire to you or to a, a grounding mat which is a conducting electrically conducting device and when you touch that mat or you touch the wire directly you're grounded because you're in direct contact with the earth and what we're talking about is that the property of the earth that is beneficial to us is its electrical charge. So the earth is a battery. You know a battery has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. And so when you, like you have a flashlight for example, when you close the circuit by flipping the switch, then you have light coming out. It's the same thing in your home when you flip the switch you close the circuit and the current flows and then electrical current flows and you have light or any appliance that work now the planet is also a battery and uh, just like a battery it has two poles and it's charged with what with electrons the, the earth is a battery and the negative pole is the surface of the earth and the positive pole is the uh, layer of the atmosphere called the ionosphere. It's about 100 kilometers up in the sky. And why it is called the ionosphere? It's because it's full of ions. And what is an ion? An mm. ion is a charged molecule. See, the air, the molecule of air that we breathe is neutral in general. But when you go 600 kilometers up in the air, what happens there is that the sun rays, especially UV light, you know, impinge upon the earth. And it, the UV light is absorbed by the air molecule, and sp which splits them into positive and negative ions. And so this protects us from the UV light coming from the sun. But those ions after that are processed into our complex atmospheric system where they are finally getting into thunder clouds and then a charge by a complex process, an electric charge accumulate at the bottom, negative charge accumulate at the bottom of the cloud and is transferred into the surface of the earth by lightning. Yes. So lightning is actually the method, main method by which the charge at the surface of the earth, the negative charge is maintained. The scientists calculated that if lightning stop on the planet, there's lightning, thousands of lightnings at every second, you know. If lightning stop on mm. the planet, 
this charge will dissipate in less than an hour. In less than an so, hour? Wow. In less than an hour. That's it's, amazing. Yes. So we re, I mean, it's very important. And most of these thunderstorms happen in Africa and in South America. Now, by destroying the forest, rainforest there, we're doing damage to ourselves, to right. this all, all mm -hmm. atmospheric system that we use to stay healthy. Let's talk about that a bit more then. What are the benefits to us from grounding ourselves? Yes. It, the way that we all build animals and human beings is to take advantage of this electric charge that the surface of the earth has. So the bioelectrical function of the system is first in importance. Right. And this depends directly on the function of your brain, which depends on your mood, which depends, you know, on complex factors, physiological, psychological, etc. And why it's like that? It's because we evolved in contact with the earth, which was basically the battery that was recharging our own battery inside. So very, very important to have those electrons. We get, we get them from the food. You know, in the past, people eat food locally, you know, they, they grow their own food or they kill games that is also grounded and the food was giving them electrons. Now with processed food today, we don't get electrons. Okay. We get electron deprived food that creates more trouble. And what is this trouble? What happens when you lack electrons in your body? First, the mitochondria cannot produce as much energy. The second one <clears throat> is now you have malfunction of the immune system. Mm. Autoimmune diseases are due to lack of electrons. What happened is that if you take any appliance and you remove the ground for the appliance, it starts to malfunction. Why? Because it doesn't have a reference point for its voltage inside. We're the same. So the immune system start to have problems in finding what is self and non-self. So it makes mistake and start attacking cells that are healthy cells that we need. If they attack the, the cells, you know, that produce insulin in the pancreas, we have diabetes, you see. If they start attacking brain cells, we have Alzheimer's. So all of these things, and another problem is by lacking electrons, positive charge accumulate in the body. And those positive charges are like acidic. If, if you have a bacteria, you, you make a wound and bacteria comes in. How is the immune system taking care of these bacteria? It's by engulfing them or, and then digesting them with acid. And we do digest with acid too. Our stomach is acidic. Or they pour acid on, on them. Okay? But then this, this situation now has to be resolved. I mean, that means the acidic situation here has to be canceled, neutralized. You need electrons for that. If the body lacks electrons, what it's going to do? It's going to start to say, well, we have a problem here. And the cells will say, we're attacked by, because the acid is not neutralized, the cell will feel, will, will be damaged. And they will send messenger to the body, hey, we're attacked. And they will, the body will sell, send more white blood cells. And the damaged cell will be killed. Mm -hmm. And now we have a pro problem because now we have too much acid there. Now, not having negative charge to neutralize that, what the body does, it put fluids there. That's why we have inflammation. Aha, okay. there's that key word that comes up yeah, again was, and again. I was waiting for that. Enemy number one. This Enemy comes up in one. so many conversations that we have about health, that yes. inflammation is at the root of so it's many of health issues. But what is the root of inflammation? Yes. That's what they don't, don't talk about. Yes. It's a lack of electrons. Yeah. Right, so prevention rather than cure, yeah. Exactly. They don't go into prevention. They're trying all kinds of medication. They're trying antioxidants. Antioxidants, by the way, are molecules that give you electrons. 
but it's not very effective because they have to go through the stomach first if you swallow them and the stomach is acidic itself yeah. you see so it, it, it's going to just kill the antioxidant the normal way the body is designed to get the antioxidant is through the hands and the feet you know there's more term nervous termination on the feet the sole of the feet than anywhere else in the body really more than the fingertips and the hands mm. more than fingertips and the hands the hands are the second ones right why is that but the, that is because they probably used to absorb electrons. So historically, th this is really interesting. This, fit, I feel, is tying in with... Um, we did an episode a few weeks ago where we spoke to somebody about forest bathing and about how we evolved in the trees and how we evolved to breathe in the phytoncides and the essential oils that, that the trees em um, emit and how beneficial that is for our immune systems. And it feels like... So if our, if our feet are that sensitive and that is how we get grounded and that is how we receive the electrons, excuse me if I'm not getting the science right, but so historically we would have been barefoot, wouldn't we? And we evolved on this planet, on the earth, being barefoot. Yes. So has the transition to um, wearing shoes and separating ourselves from the earth, i.e. building homes with concrete floors, etc., has that was that kind of the root of um, a lot of these problems? Do you do you think is this where we started to yes, go wrong? Yes, because we disconnected ourselves from the earth, and the thing is that it, this is a recent phenomenon. It's about hundred years old or less. See, when you go hundred years ago, people were dying of what infections, you know, things like that. They were dying of because the hygiene was really poor. I mean, in, in the end of the 19th century, or about like eight, around 1875, the doctors will work on cadavers and then turn around and deliver a baby. And then mm, the woman nice. and then the woman becomes sick and they didn't understand. Shot horror. Oh. There's no need fine. to wash your hands. They, they didn't know. They didn't know. The doctor who found out said, oh, by washing my hands, the ladies are much better and they're okay and everything. They poo-pooed him so much that the guy finished in an asylum. Uh, so it took an another asylum. 30... An asylum, yes. Mm. It took 30 years more for another doctor, very well known, published paper about this for finally, you know, the doctors to look into it and finally wash their hands and help the people. I mean, such simple things, you know, sometimes yeah. they take... So mm. everything is the same thing, you know. It's like it's hard to be accepted by medical mm. science right now because it's so simple and easy. I know because I was one of the skeptics. <laughs> it's frustrating when I get out of the shower because I can never ever seem to find a nearby towel. Thinking ahead now, face a kind of scowl. Better when I get one near before I switch the power. This is kind of sounding opposite of grounding, but when I get there, water on my head there. Pretty nice there. Feeling kind of right here, though I can't really understand it if you don't share. Yeah. Don't care. I'm a big man playing with the big boys. And in my head, I'm living with the big noise. Living with the big noise. Get your towel ready before you go in there. Get your towel ready before you get wet hair. Get your towel ready. Get your towel ready. Get your towel ready. Yeah. So is there any progress with getting the medical industry to take notice of the research that's been done in this area? Yes, yes, yes. It's coming. It's coming because many doctors want to help their patients and they find uh, that there are many models. I've received emails from different doctors, you know, MDs and naturopathic doctors, and there's excellent ways to help people. And it, you would be surprised how resilient the body is when you just give the proper things. And one that mm. major one that was missing is grounding. So doctors are getting in touch with you. Um, what are they saying that they are treating with grounding or what what um, positive benefits are they finding by using by using grounding on their patients. We have so many benefits, you know, that it's, it's uh, and, and, and on so many various conditions that 
I cannot even start to explain to you. But one of those uh, that uh, conditions that are helped immediately and very, very spectacular is arthritis. arthritis. We have people with def yes, mm. we have people with deformed hands, and they ground themselves. First, the pain goes in five, ten minutes, and second, their fingers get better, and then they recover their normal function. Right. We have it is spectacular. If you want to see some spectacular, take somebody with arthritis and ground them, and you will see a change that is. But it affects everything that has inflammation. All degenerative disease that we know have inflammation, diabetes, autoimmune disease, uh, Alzheimer's, even autism. I mean, you name them, they all uh, inflammation based. They're all inflammation based. I saw one of the grounding movies, and um, the I think it was Grounded. I think that's the film. It's one of the films, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And the main guy, he discovered it because he had. I think it didn't he have a really, really bad back. Like but it's a, it's not that he's not the first one. The first one is Clint Ober in the book Earthing. Oh yes, no, that's Clint Ober. Yes, who he's the guy who discovered or rediscovered grounding for the modern man um, because of yeah. course grounding has been used by Native Americans and indigenous folk for tens of thousands of years yeah. um, but yes no, this guy that I'm talking about is the guy who did the film The Grounded he is Steve Crushell and, and he had a cripplingly bad back and he went out and he laid in the snow under his house for 20 minutes and that basically fixed his back and then he um, he then decided, right, well, I don't want to spend every night lying in the snow, but I want to ground myself while I'm sleeping in my house. So he pl basically stuck in a, a metal rod into the ground and then with a wire coming into his bed and, and I think he attached pads to his feet. So he was actually getting grounded while he slept. Yes. And then he started giving these... Um, kits out to everybody in his town He's, he lives yes. in this town in Alaska and suddenly everybody was having really positive physical effects weren't they so like people who had had shoulder pain for 20 years were suddenly coming yes. off their painkillers and people who this whole town was being cured by sleeping with grounding rods yes and, and there was also people on there who had multiple sclerosis and who hadn't had a good night's sleep for years and yeah who could suddenly sleep through the night and I read Tell on the me that thing. movie, by the way. I yeah. saw, I watched it last oh, night. Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah. I was like saying to my husband, I'm interviewing there him There he is. <laughs> <laughs> but it does seem that, and, and also on the Earthing um, Institute website, there was a story um, of somebody with Parkinson's, because yes. I'm particularly interested in that, because my mum has Parkinson's, and, um, and how from a few nights of sleeping with an Earthing sheet, he was able to go out playing golf again. And it does seem that even though it's not being, you know, widely accepted in the world of science, but it is widely having really positive physical benefits, yes, isn't it? Yes, it does. And so we're working now. We have some doctors that are interested in doing some research. For example, there is this research that was done at, um, at Penn State um, University in the Penn State Hospital for Children. And they had, uh, you know, one of the major problem with preemies is that when you put them in incubators, uh, their intestine becomes necrosed, you know, it dies. Oh. And they don't understand it, but it, they die uh, because of that. Mm. And so they, um, they wanted to have a method to help these children. And so one of the doctors... Um, was in contact with me and so he started grounding those children and made a research project of it and he found fantastic results yeah so, so they were physically joined up to a grounding wire yeah there's a little patch that was put on their foot yeah, yeah. <laughs> those little infants you know and they they had really good results you know can, can we talk about some of the practicalities of it then? Let's yes. um, take a listener with no underlying health precautions, someone who doesn't necessarily want to be investing in specialist equipment. How can they bring grounding into their lives? Well, it's the easiest thing. Go take a walk with your dog 20, 30 minutes, ground, you know, barefoot outside in the, in the grass. Depending on who you are, if you are close to a beach, you can go to a beach. 
And 30 minutes, you think it takes 30 minutes to get grounded? Well, no, what happens is that if you ground for a few seconds, stuff like that, you don't get enough charge to really make a difference. And the, the computer, you know, the biocomputer does not take this, uh, well, you know, we're grounded a little like this a lot. So it starts to be noticing that this is a real grounding and we can start doing something about 20, about 20 minutes. It depends. Some people, it's 30 minutes. So um, I recommend 30 minutes to an hour right. grounding, walking somewhere, barefoot, a place where there's no pesticide and, you know, things sure. like that. And does it matter what but, the surface is? Yes, it does matter. You don't walk on asphalt, you know, the streets that are the asphalt. Mm. Asphalt is made of petroleum, which is an insulating material, which was plastic are made from petroleum. This is what we call tarmac, right? This is like what roads are made of. Yeah, made roads. Some of them are made yeah. of concrete. Concrete is conducting, so oh. no problem. No oh, problem. so you can it's walk concrete. on concrete. Yeah. Concrete's okay, yes. tarmac not. Concrete is okay. okay. Wood is not good. It is not insulating. Good. Plastic, rubber, all of these things are like we have sole of the shoes that are made of rubber or plastic. You will be insulated. We are in home made of wood. We are insulated. Okay. So, so soil is good, grass is good, beach yes. is good. Ocean water, you know, rivers. The oh, water is good. This is good. This is what's going to be my next question because we've just done an episode on cold water swimming and we're really getting into being in the water. And there's something, um, I really feel a need to be in the water now. And I read, yeah, or I saw somebody talking about how you can get grounded in bodies of water. So you can, Oh, absolutely. Can you? The best way to be grounded is actually to be naked in the ocean. Ah, because, when? Off your because, because <laughs> the uh, ocean water is very salted. So that means that has a, a lot of ions in 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 there that conduct electricity so it's really at the potential of the of the earth and you get electrons from all pores of your body coming in nice. not only that just being sitting on the beach the water the ocean water when it evaporates it gets negative ions so you're breathing negative ions too plus you get the sunshine mm which give you vitamin D. I mean, this mm. is the best of both worlds. Yeah, this is making me very jealous, though, because I live in England. Glenn, Gwen lives in Wales. Gwen, you do live near the beach, actually. 10 degrees C, kind of a nice summer's day here, really, isn't it? I know. <laughs> actually, this is a very good point, um, because we have... At, certainly at the moment and this might be that this isn't the right time of the year to do this podcast but we are in the autumn going into the winter so um and the reason we're doing this episode is because I have felt being on my laptop all day I felt a really innate need to be outside and to be barefoot in the garden and um and I do and we say it don't we we say it oh I've I've just needed mm. to ground yeah. myself or I just needed to feel grounded and um and so I have felt myself going out and doing it more often and I might do it first thing in the morning or I love it at night when there's a dark yeah. sky and I can just see the stars and I stand out there barefoot and I Lovely. stare up at the stars. But obviously, we, obviously there's probably negative. <laughs> there's going to be negative outcomes to standing around in wet, cold soil, isn't there? It is, or, or is it OK for us to do it in the, in the autumn and the winter? Oh, it is OK. No problem. I have seen, you know, we have a, also a Facebook page called Earthing Insiders. If you want to join that, okay. you'll see all kind of people there. They do all kind of things. There's a guy there who loves to go barefoot in the snow. Oh, wow. And he grounds himself. Ah. Yeah, and you see video of him doing it. This is, this is nice. And you'll learn all mm. kind of things. And Earthing Insiders is really, earth, you know, a, sure. a good Facebook page to be on. If you wore footwear made from natural fibers, would you be able to be walking around in them and be grounded? Yes. This is a really yes, good question, is. Kate. It I is. was wondering this. Yes, it this. is. If you yeah. have like uh, uh, leather shoes, thin leather shoes like moccasin, Mm -hmm. they will you will still be grounded oh, yeah. there is a way you can check that you are grounded it's called a, a, a continuity tester so you can bring that with you anywhere and check if you're grounded or not or you can you know like for example the earthing.com company makes 
a, a grounding mat for sleeping on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's made mm -hmm. of a rubbery material, it's a little rough, but you can put a sheet on top of it. Yeah. And because we're sweating at night, we're going to be grounded again. And you have a continuity tester that you can check. So why does why does sweating make you test make you um, because, grounded? Is it the moisture? Because not only sweat is moisture, but there's a lot of salts in it. And I know that we've talked about this a lot already, but for someone listening who may be struggling still to get a grasp of it, is it possible yeah. to sum up in one sentence why people should ground themselves? Because it's absolutely mandatory if you want to stay healthy and not have inflammation in your body and have energy. Mm. It, 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 it's a must. It's not negotiable. You don't do it, you'll pay for it on, on the wrong run. The body is very resilient. It will try, you know, for years to make, make up by, you know, trying to mitigate this and that. But eventually, inflammation will be too much. You know also what happens? Another thing that happens. A couple of things I want to mention, especially interesting for women, but also for men. If you if you are really really lacking electrons, what's going to happen is the body at some point will say, "We've got to quench that inflammation." And you know where it's going to do? It's going to take electrons from the bones, and now you have osteoporosis because it will take the electrons from the and the calcium will be eliminated, and you're going to have osteoporosis. So do you do you think that? Um that a lot of our modern day illnesses, both physical and mental, are because we have separated ourselves from nature. That we are just not getting the natural charge from the from the earth that we would have historically been getting every yes. day. I mean, obviously we can't go back to running around barefoot in the soil, um, catching animals and um, <laughs> you know, building huts. Uh, so what, what can we do in our modern day then? Well, if we if we want to get grounded, like so, we should be grounding ourselves yes. every day, shouldn't we? What is the easiest way? The easiest way I found is sleep grounded. Sleep grounded. To sleep There's no grounded. effort. You sleep grounded at night. You don't need to worry during the day. You have done your not oh. only your hour, but probably six, seven, or eight hours of grounding. This is amazing, and it's the best time to be grounded because that's when the body tries to repair itself. Right. Of course. Yeah. So the best way to ground yeah. yourself during the day and not have any problem, the easiest and laziest way of doing it <laughs> is sleep grounded. <laughs> so, okay, so how do you sleep grounded? Well, there's some sleeping mat, there's some sheets, grounding sheets that you can get out there or grounding mats that you can pet, put under your sheets and you just connect them to a power outlet. Make sure that you have a good grounding system in your house. So we have this in all our homes, don't we? We have the earthing. We all, yeah. Trips it's a separate grounding system that has nothing to do with the electrical power. So it's a very good grounding system. Okay. So for people wanting to really do their research, find out more about this and explore some of these products, earthinginstitute.net is where they should head to. Yes, and also they can go to the Earthing Insiders and ask away. There's always somebody who has a creative answer to what your problem is. Some pe people have problems I've never yeah. thought about. Yeah, somebody wanted to ground his trampoline. Oh, wow. You know, that's a great way. While to do. they're working on the way. Okay, how do you do that? You know, yeah. all kind of things. Wow. <laughs> So thank you so much to Gayton for taking time out of his very busy day to talk with us and for being very patient in walking us through the, uh, the, the theory behind grounding. If you want to find out more yourself about grounding, um, then go to earthinginstitute.net and there they've got... Um, 
uh, explanations of what it is. They've got links to all of the research that's being done. They've also got links to the Earthing movie, which is um, a film that some filmmakers made around this this subject of earthing and grounding and the earthing book. So there's lots of resources on there for you to find out more. Gwen, right. We are going to do a little uh, experiential grounding of our own, aren't we, for a bit? So tell yes. me, where are, where are you? Where All are right. you? What are you doing? What are you I'm, wearing? I'm currently... <laughs> This reminds me of cold water swimming, actually, because I'm currently stood in perfectly warm slippers um, and my coat and scarf and hat, cr- clutching a warm tea, um, and I'm about to take my slippers off. I'm on the edge of my lawn. Oh, you wild thing. <laughs> I love it. We're so rock and roll. I'm about to take my slippers off. Oh, the things we do, <laughs> the risks we take. I'm going to take Calm my down. slippers right off. <laughs> Don't take them off just yet. You, have you got back up? <laughs> but do, and so I'm going to walk. My plan is to walk across my garden and into the field next door. How about you, Kate? So I, li- I live in the city centre, basically. So I am standing on the, uh, the rather small postage stamps patch of grass outside the back of my house. I haven't, I haven't taken my trainers off yet I'm just looking at it the grass the, is very muddy the, it's quite long grass there's potentially a bit of cat shit hidden in there just oh, to nice. add a freeze on of excitement <laughs> I know so I <laughs> and what's the weather like it's beautiful it's clear blue sky it's that lovely kind of late autumn wintry light quite watery light I always describe it as oh. um it's a Sunday morning and I'm shouting in the back garden barefoot. I think I look like the local crazy lady. <laughs> uh, you don't just look like her. Um, anyway, <laughs> where, are your shoes off yet? I'm stepping in. I'm stepping okay. in. Okay, I've, I've slipped off the slippers. I will say that it's gloriously sunny here as well, which really, really helps because it's been raining for days. Oh. But we have had a bit of a frost this morning. Oh, is it nippy? Tell me how it feels now you've taken your old lady okay, slippers so off. Okay, <laughs> my m s slippers are off and I'm stood here on the paving stones. I'm not going to lie, Kate, it's quite cold. <laughs> you're on the paving stones. Oh, yeah. you're taking it easy. Come on, venture out into the, uh, well, I'm, into the grass I'm, I'm and the quagmire. I'm waiting for you. Are your shoes off yet? Okay, my shoes are off. I'm in the grass. I'm in oh, the mud. In the it's a, okay, here we go. I'm in the grass. <gasps> Ooh. Hey, that does... It is lovely, isn't it? It's nice. It's a little bit squelchy, um, <laughs> but it's really nice. I think right now it's just that sensation of the cold, the coldness against my skin, which is refreshing. Yeah. You yeah. Know, do you think this is what Gayton was imagining when he talked about walking along the beach with, <laughs> you know, getting the vitamin D from the sunshine? <laughs> fingers the vitamin G from the ground. <laughs> from the ground, I know, soaking up the rays, I know. maybe having a skinny mocha latte. <laughs> Whilst then jumping on his extra long uh, skateboard and going down Venice Beach. This is the problem with interviewing people in California, Kate. He's not standing in a a field in Wales, freezing his little toes off. (laughs) We're keeping it real here, Gwen. We're doing... (laughs) This is the reality of grounding yeah. in the UK in winter. <laughs> OK, do you know, this is getting easier. Yes, it is, isn't it? That initial shock definitely goes away. And yes. then, yeah, it gets the numbness. The yeah. numbness takes over. That was, st- that was starting to get a little bit painful. And I was thinking, how on earth are we supposed to do 20 to 30 minutes of this? But actually, um, this has already got a lot easier. Because that does feel like a long time when you say it out loud, doesn't it? 20, 30 minutes of just yes. being barefoot. Yes, but this but is you actually... know, you can't... Yeah. I mean, where would you do this? If you, like, obviously you could do it in your back garden. If you're lucky enough to live in the, a more rural area, would, would people feel confident to go out wandering along over more land or through fields barefoot? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, the thing is, when you do go wandering around more land and etc. And, and woodland, you're going to come across things like sticks... And thorns, so you're going to have yes. to um, yes. take, uh, take a little bit. You're going to have to exercise a little bit of caution, aren't you? But um, I yeah. reckon, because yeah, I'm I'm out in a field now, and um, this is this is working fine for me. Oh, I love this vision I've got in my mind of you walking through a field up onto the moors in West Wales <laughs> with your bare feet, your wind blowing in the hair. <laughs> it just um, sounds heavenly. Um, I have got a woolly hat firmly <laughs> on my head. There is no wind blowing in my hair. Yeah. But I think another place I would go, which I have done regularly in the summer, is the beach. Yeah, um, that's perfect for it. Yes, and because often, especially when I'm walking the dog down there, I'm in my wellies. But in actual fact, yeah, yeah they're rubber-soled, aren't they? So you want to get those rubber yeah. soles off. 
Well, this is a really good point you've made because actually we both, after our interview with Gaten, we said he said it's this is only a phenomenon that's been felt for the last hundred years. Why, why were people not struggling to ground before a hundred years ago? And then on doing a bit of research and reading a bit of the information on the Earthing Institute website, they were explaining it was all to do with the invention of rubber-soled shoes that right. suddenly put up this insulating barrier between yes. our bodies and the ground that we were walking on. And I guess modern pavements, tarmac, insulated materials that a lot of our urban environments are, are yeah. protected, paved oh, in. I'm just going to put the mic down here so you can get... Was <laughs> oh, that me, you squelching? That's me squelching through actual mud. I feel like I haven't done this since I was a mm. child. I've, I've, oh, this is a very unusual it. feeling, feeling the, the mud between my toes. Um, do the you know, joy, the, the joy, joy of it. Yeah, with my cup of tea in my hand. Um, and the other thing, because it really ties in, doesn't it, with this whole kind of, what he was saying is that we have, what did he say, we've disconnected ourselves basically, like from, yes. from the ground, from the earth and from nature, which is something that we've just been finding out more and more. Through this podcast. Yeah, the common threads that seem to go through a lot of our episodes seem to come back to this, don't they? Sort of disconnecting ourselves from the natural, ro- the natural world around us. Yes. And I think it's Johan Harry in his book Lost Connections. He describes us as living in a sick society because this is not how we evolved as animals. We evolved, yeah, living, in the, living um, yeah. In, on the earth, in the earth, as part of the earth. And and as tribes and and we've separated ourselves and so many of us so many of us are sick physically and mentally so many of us are depressed and we're definitely doing something wrong aren't we yeah it seems to be um a common theme doesn't it that sort of keep coming back to but i think skipping across the moors with your toes wiggling in the the soil can only can only be a good thing like you were saying how we use the term grounding in so many things and um, in so many different contexts. And so many of us often feel just scattered and ungrounded, yeah. don't we? Yes, yes. And is that, is that the same thing? I mean, I don't think we know the answer to this, do we? But is that the same thing as not being electro-physically grounded? Is that feeling of being scattered and not being centred in our bodies, is that, is that somehow connected? I mean, I don't well, know. This is what we've got to try out, isn't it? Because he was saying about how, like, take the example of children and how, well, we're sleeping on beds that are elevated above the ground, so they are, so we're sleeping ungrounded. Then we're running around in rubber shoes all day and then, um, yeah, kids are playing on playgrounds which are asphalt, so they're ungrounded. And then they're coming home, getting straight into their carpeted um, houses and sitting on screens like so they're spending an entire day and most of us most of us are spending entire days ungrounded yeah. this so... makes me so sad this really makes me so sad I see it in my own kids in the winter in particular so they walk on pavements to the local school in a city school not a blade of grass to be seen yeah um, uh, and then at the end of the day they walk home in the dark back to our house yeah so it's not even like I can drag them out to the woods after school because it's pitch black oh. and winters you know Monday to Friday during winter it's you know it's pretty deprived of anything yeah. natural yeah so I think there is something innate in us that when we're saying we're feeling ungrounded it's because we are and we feel it how are you feeling now how you um, how are your feet feeling <laughs> they're bloody cold I, don't know <laughs> I, can, I can see oh I, oh ah. Oh. I just nearly had headed through a gorse bush there. That's not... I don't want to be doing that on my, with my bare foot, although they are nearly numb. I mean, I was going to ask you, Kate. I mean, I've, oh, God. I am, ah! <laughs> no, what is going on? What is going on? I can't even send help. There's quite a lot of gorse out here on the moor, actually. And I'm just, I'm just going... Just walking through some horse shit there. I mean, it's very lovely. I feel wow, like you've I'm... gone deep here, Gwen. You've thrown <laughs> yourself into this. <laughs> Committed. I think it's going to take a while to warm these feet up, but this is why, right? This is why people buy things like 
grounding mats and they decide to do their grounding overnight by sleeping on a grounding sheet, isn't it? Exactly. This is it. And Gaten touches on that, that, you know, if you can't be doing a a kind of natural version of grounding in your everyday life, then there are ways around it. And, you know, we would never encourage people to um, have to spend their hard-earned money on things, but those those products are there if you're interested in finding out more about them. Grounded sheets that you can put on your beds, grounded mats that you can put under your feet... Yes. Um, yes, you know, we're nowhere endorsing them, but they're there for you to find out about. Yes, and and because this is all very well, I'm super privileged, obviously, being able to wander barefoot through horse shit and gorse bushes, but not everybody, like, how would you do this in a city, Kate? Well, exactly, this is it. Um, I did think about, I mean, actually, before I say that, the earlier on in the week, in the mornings when I've got up and had my cup of coffee after we've been researching this episode, I have been coming out and standing in the grass in the back garden and there's no denying that it immediately makes you feel good. But, you know, after 10 minutes, I'm like, screw that. (laughs) I'm getting pretty chilly and go back inside. And so I guess that's it, isn't it, that people in cities, this is, yeah, they're going to have to invest my friend who told who's the one who's doing loads of barefoot walking she has bought herself an earthing mat and she um has she so she travels around with that gayton has one at his desk doesn't he and i was actually thinking yeah i mean like we were saying at the top of the podcast we um we're only in this for health finding ways to improve our mental health um but so as a kind of as a side there are all these physical benefits to it but you know we encourage people to go and do their own research on that we're not we're not here saying this is the cure for any you know yeah. we're not in that position but um i have to say that when i was reading some anecdotal evidence that like people with multiple sclerosis and people with parkinson's had um were sleeping on earthing sheets and were having like finally having a really good night's sleep um i thought yeah. about my mom and my mom's got parkinson's she, yeah. so she really struggles with sleep she has bad leg pain right. and i thought actually do you know what's the harm i'm going to i'm going to yeah. get one of these sheets and um, just to see if she can sleep, have a better night's sleep. That, I mean, that's amazing. If nothing else, if she gets a better night's sleep through it, then that itself will massively improve quality of life, doesn't it? Yeah. Because that's a huge change in your day-to-day yes. well-being if you're getting yeah. enough sleep. Cause yeah, because when, yeah, when she's not had a good night, that's, that's ruined her next day, basically. Yeah, I'm sure. Will you continue to do this? Will you continue to walk around barefoot? Um... Do you know what? Yes, because I don't think, I don't know if I'm really going to come out here again in the winter um, barefoot walking around the moor, absolutely freezing my tits off. Um, but I, every day I do like to just pop out, like like you were saying, just pop out into your back garden and stand there barefoot and look up at the sky. And I, I yeah. really like to do that last thing at night when I've been, when I've spent my entire evening watching television I love being outside barefoot looking up at the stars. Oh, Oh, that sounds lovely, particularly because you don't have that much light pollution where you live, do you? So you're actually probably getting a really beautiful night sky. (laughs) You can see some... What are these stars of which you speak? (laughs) I have no idea what you're talking about, to be honest with you, Ren. I reckon I will as well, because all summer, that's my favourite thing in the summer, is to rip my shoes off and be barefoot. And the only thing that stops me doing it in the winter is I might get dirty feet. It's like, sod it, I don't care if I get dirty feet in my back garden. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Who cares? I don't know if I'm quite ready to go. You know, skipping down Park Street barefoot, um, but <laughs> <laughs> dodging needles. <laughs> yeah, exactly over the broken glass. But I think I think that there is, like we were touching on, that there is an innate need in us. There's an innate um, desire in us to be barefoot on the grass, isn't there? Or barefoot in the soil and and to make ourselves feel feel more grounded yes um, i also think if people are um they want the benefits of cold water swimming but they don't have um they don't have the the gonads to go and get in the cold water which is perfectly <laughs> fine and understandable that maybe maybe just slipping off your slippers and popping into the back garden is doable <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Write Up My Podcast. If you want to get in touch with us, if you've got any ideas for future episodes or you want to give us any feedback, then you can always email us at writeupmypodcast at gmail.com. 
The other thing we would love for you to do is to subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it and also pop across to Apple Podcasts where you can rate and review it and that would make us look better. Thank you. You can also get us on our socials on Insta and Twitter which is at WriteUpMy. And you can also go and check out our Patreon, which we are slowly starting to add things to, aren't we, Kate? What is that? What's that address again? It is patreon.com forward slash write up my podcast. And um, as always, we must not forget to thank our very talented and very generous team of people who help us put our episodes together. Go on, Kate. I always do this bit. You see if you can remember you... everybody's surnames. <laughs> 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 um, that is our ever patient editor, Andy Turvey. Thank you, Andy. The very talented Andrew Grimes, who does our music and jingles. And our wonderfully eloquent content editor, Kat. Thank you, everybody. We are, as always, hugely grateful to you. Please share with your friends. And meanwhile, we will be back in a couple of weeks. Take care of yourselves and keep doing things to make you feel good. Bye bye. Bye. Tell me. Did you like the podcast, Brian? No! Oh. If, unlike Brian, you thought our podcast was really great, then don't hold back, like, subscribe, and tell your mate. But if, like Brian, you thought our podcast wasn't fun, then just keep quiet, don't feel the need to tell anyone. Oh, we'd love to hear from you if you've got some thoughts to share, such... Rich and lovely views that all should be aware of. But I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great. And if you did, like, subscribe and tell your mate. Because we don't need grumpy pants bringing everybody down. No, we don't need negative Nellies making people frown. So I hope you liked our podcast and you thought it was really great. And if you did, like, subscribe and tell your mate.